Hello, everybody, and welcome to another wonderful Saint stream. Today, we have CLOL. It's going to be our St. Clair College uh, varsity team versus McGill University Esports there. Once again, I'm your host for today, Matthias, also known as Matthias, joined by Theo, the Holy Juan, and Gabriel. Okay, Blockbeat. Yeah. And uh, today, so games are going to be looking pretty good. Um, we're going to go over, like, the kind of the roster that we're going to be playing with, and we're going to be going over the patch notes, which is really going to be really interesting. So, have you guys read a little bit of the patch notes? Not too I much. I have not myself. read the current pat no patch notes, no, but I think you were talking about that uh, Briar has some new updates that allow her to go a little bit more of a bruiser path. Yeah, so Briar basically got, so she was perma being played lethality Halo Blades, and that's not the direction that... Right, was originally intending for her to go. Uh, so instead, they kind of nerfed her AD ratios and slapped in some uh, health ratios. So now, if she builds health items, she gains more health regeneration when as her health lowers. Um, so, I mean, there was the incarnation of the Heart Steel Briar with, I mean, if you use it enough, 200% healing. That's nice and balanced. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of builds that are a lot more viable now on Briar. Um, but I mean, we have the changes with the support items. I don't know if you've played around with those. Oh yeah, the support items. I, I heard there was a big problem with the support items. Early on, everyone was building World Atlas for the extra gold. There's even some new team comps where there's two top, two bottom, and yeah. one in the middle. So... It, you know, <laughs> I've been hearing a lot about the support items, but is there any new nerf or buff to those items in the current? Uh, so currently, the only significant nerf that I see from the support item is to the uh, Spellblade or the on-hit uh, one. So the one that was usually built by champions like uh, Pike or more aggressive AD um, champions in the support role, which is kind of like a weird scenario because there's pretty much just... Pike and maybe Senna that uses that, um, but it was nerfed because uh, essentially what happens is not only do you get an enhanced attack, but that enhanced attack also lowers um, or like increases the amount of damage that is taken by that opponent that receives the attack. Um, so it was decreased from 12% to 10%, um, which is really good because the current meta is very bursty, mm -hmm. and it was one big like factor in that. Uh, along with that, I think we had um, some pretty significant nerfs to the um, jungle during like the patch, right? Yes, because the whole new, uh, the entire new season has ma just been a major change to the jungle, pretty much. Like there's yeah. changes all around, with new items and new mechanics and new metas. But the main change is going to be those void grubs that we've been seeing. Theo, what do you think of those? Those are a very very good early option. That's why we've seen these very strong lane champs in top lane being played like Udyr was a champ you didn't see at all oh, right yeah. now probably one of the premier picks because be, as soon as those void grubs spawn Udyr beats anybody in lane he's able to get that pressure and those void grubs really begin to scale up really really early so I think it's a very interesting change it changes the meta in mid and top a lot and makes playing around that first rift herald and grubs that much more important yeah and that you also have to take that gamble of if you do go for those grubs you kind of sacrifice some some uh, power from dragon there so it enables the other team to maybe yeah. move if they have enough vision yeah. it's, a, it's a great change to the entire meta and I think we've been seeing some other changes the matter just based on items alone like i think we were talking about yeah. sundered sky there is sundered sky is a big a one malignance one. is taking turns along with storm surge i know that a lot of ap and scaling into the late game has been like a little bit more pre like per, um used in the mid lane uh so like we're seeing a comeback when it comes to corky um in the pro play scene uh a lot of of course yone or kali syndra oriana all those standard staple picks um um, surprisingly, I haven't seen a lot of Jace, uh, but Rumble is definitely present. Uh, in the top lane, of course, you have the standard Cassante, Jax, blah, 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 Shazam. Um, Aatrox being super prevalent with Sundered Sky, because, uh, you know, not dying and then not dying even more. Why the hell not? And speaking of not dying, we have the undying spirit of our team. Do you have the lineup for today, Theo? I think we were just talking oh, about yes. that. We were just talking about it. I'm not 100% sure. Percent sure, but I'm 99% sure in this. We're gonna have Ricky in the top lane. We're gonna have Maddie in the jungle. Bakery Boy in the mid lane. Rock Boom on that ADC spot, as you see all four members there. And Alonzo is gonna be playing support for us today. So a bit of a throwback lineup. Probably haven't seen this one in a while, but a very strong lineup at that. And they're gonna look to start the season off on a very hot note. Yeah, they've been on a hot streak as of late. They had a great run through the Canadian Esports Nationals, and they had a great run all semester. So they're 
they're looking to take this win even further. And we have had a few changes on the roster, I believe, but I think it's pretty much the same lineup. Yeah. Just a few subs have been changed around. So yeah. we may later on in the semester see some new comps come out. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Um, although what what I'm really looking for here when it comes to the gameplay, right? Um, one of the things that have really changed in the meta is that Senna was incredibly buffed uh, from, I believe, her soul, like the amount of souls that she drops to um, her, uh, not her durability, but her damage output. So we might see some fasting Senna's come out. I don't know if the team's practiced it, but it has been coming out a lot more in pro play lately so might be interesting over there yeah and do we have any predictions for the draft do we think Ooh. we're going to see anything out of the ordinary we're going to have any meta predictions because it, it's kind of hard to do that now but if we had to what do you think do you think there's any surefire picks coming so here? lately there's been this really nasty build on Lux that's been coming out a lot where she would play conqueror rod of ages unending despair which basically makes your Lux lifesteal which Never thought I'd say that ever. Um, and she also still bursts really, really hard. Um, so we might see it. I don't know if it's in our players' rosters, though. And But we're definitely going to be seeing that uh, Conqueror Unending Despair combo. I'm all, like 95% sure of it, just because it's so strong right now, and it's probably going to get nerfed soon. <laughs> Theo, you look like you have something on your mind. What do you, what do you think? You mentioned Udyr earlier. Yeah, we're gonna see Udyr, that. Udyr's an interesting pick, but if it gets picked by the enemy team, uh, Ricky might pick his Olaf into it. Uh, oh, yeah. They were talking <laughs> about that matchup. It's a bit maybe of a rougher matchup for Olaf, but Ricky is really an Olaf specialist, so I wouldn't be too surprised to you that also Maddie in the jungle has been known for his Lilia. So Lilia, kind of a sleeper pick in today's meta, I think, could be something that we see them pick up. And just to talk about another jungler, if I'm going to make my uh, prediction or pick, I just want to see Viego. He's in a very good spot right now. He's my main. I love to see him. And there's been some cool techs with the Titanic Hydra. It makes him a lot more uh, better with his lifesteal and all that. But with all that said, I think we're going to throw it to a quick break, and then we'll be right, right back with the draft.
everybody, and welcome back to our Collegiate League of Legends stream, St. Clair College Varsity Team versus McGill Esports. Here we are with the picks and bands. What do you think we're going to see, guys? Uh, we're probably going to be seeing some of the more meta picks. So we've seen that the uh, Lucian Melio is pretty common. Uh, really big in pro play just because of the way that Lucian procs his passive with Melio. Um, so finally seeing Melio coming out in pro play, which is nice. Because um, he, 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 he came into the game and just didn't exist. Uh, ooh, Pantheon first ban. First ban day. is Pantheon, which is interesting coming up from St. Clair College. I don't really see Pantheon played too much at the high level. I don't think it's... He doesn't have much team play, but he does have a lot of solo queue carry potential. So maybe it's just that the enemy top laner is more of a one trick towards Pantheon. That's a good wide ban too. He can play yeah, in yeah. lots of positions there. So we're seeing Twisted Fate from McGill, followed by yep. a Seraphine ban from St. Clair College, and then a Jax ban from McGill. That's yep. a Good Pretty band. standard, Jax, yeah. Very strong top Just and jungle right now. Jungle too. Yeah. Oh, okay. And that's gonna be eight trucks. Makes sense. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and the then Lilia, the Lilia band yeah, coming that's out. That's targeted. Like you said, Theo. It's gonna be a very strong band as well. So I'm interested to see what our few first picks will be. Yeah, here probably gonna look to ooh, brand. Um, that's probably jungle. A brand jungle. Yeah, I'm I don't think sure. that brand is really strong in any other lanes right now. Uh, okay, so jungle answered by jungle, because I don't th I don't think it's an echo could, mid. It could, could be, be mid, mid, but I think you're right. It is mm. probably going to be jungle if all. Yeah, that's Jace probably top. jungle if Jace is top, or it could be Jace mid. But if it's Jace mid, then yeah, echo sure as hell is not in the mid lane. There's the Milio. Okay, like so we're going to see a Lucian here coming out. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty standard draft up until now. Just I mean, they're they're playing meta right now. Uh, the, ooh, and a Draven the pick Draven. on the side of McGill. What do you think of that, Theo? I don't think it's going to be very, very good. <laughs> Melio Lucian usually does good into Draven, but you have to see the support he's paired up with. Want to see an engaged support like Nautilus or Pike or something of that sort just yeah. to really get oh, in there. Oh, it's banned out now. But the Pike mm. is banned out, the Corky was banned out, and the Auction by McGill University. I'm not too sure. Maybe for the mid lane. And there's the Blitzcrank, the other hook champion that you want to see banned. So I wonder what they're going to pair up with this Draven. It's going to be in Rakan for... Ooh. It's a pretty interesting lane here, but I think if Lucian Milio play this one well, it's a pretty favorite lane for them. Yeah, I mean, just the sustain. It's... is Rakan probably won't be able to engage, and if he does, they need to assassinate the Milio instantly here. Uh, ooh, okay, Rakan Irelia. pulling out the Olaf and the Irelia in the mid lane. And That's then the Rumble at the top lane. Ooh, Rumble's pretty good right now from Yeah, he's heard. strong. He just got nerfed, actually. Uh, they nerfed his base damage, but, I mean, it's still percentage of max health damage. That thing hurts. Um... Yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be rough. He has less armor uh, magic penetration too on his harpoons, so overall, it's gonna be interesting. Overall, what do you think of these team picks? Uh, in terms of team composition, uh, personally, I'm disgusted by the Irelia, but that's a personal grudge. Um, I'll say Saint Clair wins this comp solely due to the fact that in terms of a balance between CC and damage they have a slightly better one. Uh, you have the Irelia with the stuns, you have Melio with his Q, you've got Brand with his stun. Uh, in terms of like the red side, like Echo's stun is conditional. Uh, you've got Draven's Airborne, but that's usually used offensively. And then you've got Rock on Airborne, which is the only one that's pretty much guaranteed. Plus, of course, the, um, the charm on his ultimate. So CC-wise, St. Clair wins. Yeah. And we'll see if those predictions are true. I do think we have the game ready, so we're going to transition into that very, very soon. You can see our team is all locked in and ready. They're just getting right into the game, and I think we're going to start it in just a few moments here. And Theo, what are you thinking of this? Let's see if our, your picks were right on the team side. We have Public Enemy 1. That's going to be Rickley LaFleur, formerly known as, going top. Maddie going to be the jungler on brand. Of course, I really admit Rock Boom and Alonzo holding down the bot lane as ADC and support, respectively. And it looks like we're seeing a lot of early face-offs here in the river. Yeah, pretty, pretty normal, pretty standard. Uh, both junglers just looked at each other. 
Axe is gonna land there from Ricky. Second one's gonna miss, so there's gonna back over there. Maddie stops the back, which is pretty nice for him. But I think the main key for St. Clair here is gonna, is gonna be have that top and mid lane prio, try and get those Rift Heralds uh, as early as possible, and really play, play around the side lane of Olaf and Irelia. Because against those Jace Rumble matchups, I think the later the game goes, the stronger those champs become in the side lane. So that's gonna be their key to victory. They don't, don't really want to team fight as much this game. Yeah, the comp on this side of uh, on the side of Saint Clair definitely is more centered around an all-in. Uh, where if you look at the team composition on the side of the McGill University, it's kind of a 50-50. You've got the poke from Jace, which is absurd later on in the game, uh, but you've got the all-in with the Rumble, the Echo, and the Draven, uh, along with the uh, Rakan. Oh, hold on here. Rakan gonna do a little bit of an engage, trying to get some poke onto the bot lane. Uh, actually succeeds doing it, which is really nice, but I don't know if that's a complete win on the Draven side. No, they got a few hits in, but he still took quite a bit of damage there, so it's gonna be a little bit of a poke engage there. Gonna get another one there. Just a few more autos for the Draven. Mm. But wow, that Rakan Yeah, that PT hurts. Quick. Now, they're gonna have to back off here. Bot lane's just going slowly but surely. Mid lane still chipping away, winning the wave a little bit early right now. But overall, we're still in the early game. And I'm not seeing any off meta picks in terms of starting items. No one's picking World Atlas for the whole team, so I think we're in for a pretty usual game. We could talk about jungle pathing really quickly. Brand's going bot to top lane while Echo is going top to bind for his hide. Miguel's victory boy is going to get a nice trade in the mid lane, but nothing too much there. Uh, Ricky is able to have that prio there in top lane, so going to look to keep that one up until those void spawn. You can see Irelia is able to push in the Jace with relative ease. It's just down in that bot lane that the Draven in the very, very early levels will have the prio against the Lucian and the Milia. Yeah, Lucian will have to play a little bit carefully right now, a little bit of an early clear from the Draven, but they're still chipping away and they're doing decent enough damage to keep them at bay right now. Yeah, important and to keep in mind, uh, Rockon has no pots left. He had to use both of his pots to heal back up to a reasonable amount of health. So in terms of the bot lane, they might be pushed in, but they also have the health advantage. So on the side of St. Clair, looking pretty good. Pretty good, and... Right now we're seeing engage top, it's being won out by the Olaf right now, has a level advantage and has the wave clear advantage, things are going good. But we'll get him in number one right now, living up to his name and Rockboom going in, they're trying to engage on the support but it's not really going to amount to much as can't find some good shots and it looks like we're going to see a gank come down in the Echo. It's going to be very, very dangerous if Rockboom just goes a little bit too far forward, they are as good as that but they seem like they know that the jungler is here because the jungler isn't anywhere else. They're going to move up a little bit though, so that Echo should be able to gank here. Rockboom's able to Ooh. dodge away from the Rakan. going to get the heal out from the Draven. There's going to be the Echo going in. Rock has to flash out. Alonso's going to pop that heal. Alonso's going to flash out as well. Rockboom's still going to be staying alive. Alonso should go down to that auto attack and that's going to be first blood for the Draven. Rockboom still has his barrier, so could look to be a bit aggressive here. Does a lot of damage to the Rakan here. Doesn't have any mana though, so can finish him off and that's going to be a great bottling gank from Miguel University. And now McGill University starting off on a little bit of a roll, but then we see a jungle gank top evening. The score line now just within a hundred gold of each other. That kill's gonna be going over to Brand there. And right now it looks like void grabs are gonna be up in 30 seconds, so we're gonna have to see which jungle <laughs> objective they're gonna pick here. Will they go dragon or will they go for the grubs? We turn back with the mid here. We see the Jays just trying to get wave control right now. Same with the Rumble trying to get the advantage as Olaf did have to back there after that battle. But it's looking like St. Clair's a little bit of a better position right now on the micro, but overall this game's pretty dead even. Yeah, looking at the objectives coming up now, it seems like Echo's gonna wanna try and go for the grubs. And it seems, I'm not sure like uh, our Maddie is Kind of in the no. Oh, maybe no. Okay, he's going for the grubs too. We might have a fight going on on the side of the grubs here, but the bot lane definitely getting the poke in. Um, Draven did cash in his stacks though, so keep in mind that he does have a serrated dirk already. Public enemy number oh, one flash. dealing damage, flashing in on the rumble. Axe connects again. The slow is too much, and rumble falls. Good lord. Yeah, what a play there from Ricky there, going all in, getting the kill. Great control there, and now Bakery Boy also 
practicing great control, stunning up the Jace in the mid lane. Echo's there to try and do something here, try and help out his mid laner, but he's a little bit too cautious with such a huge wave there. Now going back to the bot lane, they're just being slow and steady, taking control. They had a little bit of a rough start. They are down one kill. They're trying to make that up in CS right now. Yeah, the only rough part for St. Clair this game is the ball in at the moment. The rest of the team is doing very, very good. Ricky able to get that soul kill. They're diving the rumble under the tier two. Just not letting him get to that wave is crucial. And that is not good for that rumble. You could see where St. Clair are putting their focus to this game and it's towards that top side of the map so Rob and Alonzo just have to relax and play a little bit more safe this game but it's going to be the dragon started up here for McGill University I don't know if we'll be able to see a contest here as Ricky picks up the kill on the rumble again that's the third death for the rumble with that dark seal going to be so so far behind not even able to walk to his tier one McGill University will pick up the dragon but it's going to be all on Ricky here to yeah. push through the silent and just take apart the base yeah I don't think uh, I don't I think the Dark Seal is going to get much use for now uh, on the side of Rumble. Maybe uh, maybe the gold could go to something else, uh, but... Right now in the early game, I must say, they're doing amazingly on jungle right now for McGill. They have gotten more grubs. St. Clair only stealing one out from under them, and they also have the first dragon, so that is right true. now the objectives are going their way, but it's a top and mid are definitely going the way of St. Clair. But this could change quickly as Baker Boy is getting very, very Ooh, low. Is... But he's going to use his ult to get out cannon. safely. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did he get... even get the cannon through the ult? I'm not sure. No, he did. He did. His okay, CS okay. went up, so he did get Whew. that ult cannon with the ult. Now we're going to see maybe a bit of an aggressive engage here from Rockman in the balling, but so much vision balling from McGill University. They really want to play around this balling because it's their strong point. It seems like Echo wants to come defend this dive bot just in case it's happening, but it's going to be a bad coming out from Maddie and now we're gonna see everyone hitting that level six spike but nothing really to fight over so uh, pretty interesting game state to say the least yeah pretty calm right now um, Sinclair definitely ahead in terms of gold and in terms of uh, CS if you look at the mid lane and if we look at the top lane uh, although surprisingly rumble isn't as far away from um, Olaf's CS as I thought he would be considering he got basically zoned off his entire wave um even behind his tower but all things considered uh definitely better than what it could have been because if it was pretty much anybody else he probably would have been stuck with a good old 30 to 40 cs uh difference so that is definitely better than it could have been and looking back here in the mid lane once again just Clearing it out, and I think Rumble just keeping up with the CS, that flamethrower is just great for, for wave clear. It's just oh, a yeah. huge AoE, and I think Olaf just has a little bit more trouble keeping up with that, that clear. So I think that's why he's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. And right now we're one minute off from our second set of Void Grubs right now. It looks like Maddie's trying to get vision clear of the jungle, maybe go for a gank. Just trying to get as much vision as they can. You see a control ward there watching the Rift Herald spot there. Wow, they're gonna go in for a little bit of a dive there in the mid lane, going in for a gank oh, with the nice jungler, match. but he's gonna take a tower shot. He's gonna try and dive back in, doesn't find much though. He's just gonna play safe under his tower. Ganks are so much harder in the mid lane now that's been widened up like yeah. that. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, speaking of, I just remembered, Irelia got a, like, I guess a kind of nerf where it updates the amount of um, times that her Q gets reset, I guess you could say are checked for reset. And so Irelia can dash faster than she used to be able to, which is interesting. But Speaking we're dashing in, the Rakan's gonna go in for a huge stun, and it's gonna be a massive fight down here in the bot lane. <laughs> They're gonna get the Void Grubs, but the rest of the team is gonna go down as Rock Boom's being picked oh. off. He hits the Blast Plant, though. He might be able to get out here, and he does. They only lost the support there, so that was making the best of a bad situation, but good gank from McGill. Another great gank from the Echo. Having to burn all their sums, but it is, in fact, worth it. Draven picking up a second kill, cashing in, Yet again, he's going to be so, so strong. Definitely going to be the focal carrying point here for McGill University. But on the other side of the map, we have the gank coming in. We're not, not able to get the stun onto the rumble, so he will make it out. But he's forced off yet another wave. Here's St. Clair coming back into it. Alonso's back in lane already. And 
they should be able to catch this wave with relative ease, uh, relative safety as the Echoes goes back to clean the jungle, but McGill University are really playing through this bot lane. They're going to be sending the Echo here probably a couple more times as they're, that's the place on the map where they're finding the most success. Yeah, most definitely here, the top lane being the priority of St. Clair College, trying to get those Void Grubs, trying to get that Herald when it eventually comes up, uh, and the bot lane definitely being the priority uh, on the side of McGill University. That being said, uh, I'm not sure which one is the best play, because currently we don't really know what is meta. Is your top laner stronger than the entirety of your bot lane? Is the bot lane more important than the top lane? It's hard to tell because of the new objectives that have come up. And we're kind of seeing the split strategies here where McGill University is still sticking with the your bot lanes are priority along with the dragons uh, type of philosophy that we had last season. Um, and St. Clair College here is kind of looking for that newer philosophy of, okay, well, maybe the boy grubs and the herald are a more important combo than stacking soul, right? So we're going to be seeing kind of... Um, their doctrine in terms of what is the priority. Oh, hold on. Melee getting caught out in vision here. That could have been bad, but uh, luckily he does not get caught out. Big engage mid, though. He uses ult, gets Ooh. half health, and now we're going to see a massive team fight. As oh, the ult. Echo goes in as well, gets him very low. Oh, he's at half health right now. Will they find a kill out of this? I don't know. It looks like Bakery Boy is going to be the one to get killed, though. He dashes in and dies Ooh. to the Jays. That's going to be a rough kill for the side of St. Clair. Unfortunately for Matty, his ult did not bounce off there. It could have been massive, but just missed it and then Bakery Boy was a little bit too right, far in at that point. Uh, Ricky's able to get the whole first turret top lane already uh, without even getting the Rift Herald, just with the Grubs with the advantage that he built for himself. So a very, very strong Olaf. Might even see a hole breaker on this. Would be, wouldn't be would be the craziest. But there's going to be a TP uh -oh. coming out here from Jace right on top of Rockbloom. The Dragon is started up for the side of McGill and this should be another free Dragon as Maddie and Bakery Boy are still coming back to their spot. Right now, it looks like they're just going to continue to win on the Dragons, like you said, Gabe. It's just all the way going the way of McGill in terms of Dragons. They got the first two, and it's going to be Infernal Soul. So this is going to be one they're going to want to fight for. St. Clair's going to have to step this one up soon. Yeah, and kind of seeing at that dodge range, they didn't even, like, St. Clair didn't even care about the Dragon. They didn't contest it. Like, they placed a little bit of vision saying, okay, we want to make sure we know where you are. But aside from that, they did not care for those two first Dragons. So we're really seeing them prioritize on those Void creatures first. Um, and the, the, it, the, the, the Herald's coming out soon. Exactly. The thing I want to mention about that, though, is even though they have been focusing it, they still are down two. McGill did get the first two, and St. Clair only managed, managed to steal one of the first two sets of Void Grub. So yep. it's not looking good for them. They uh, do have double the amount, but being down two dragons, I don't know if that's worth only four Void Grubs there. Yeah, because they don't get the passive proc, right? You need five or six to get those mini Voidlings, minions things. Um, Belveth alt passives, if you will. Um, <laughs> that, like, come out and help you. So from that standpoint, they are quite far behind. Um, in terms of objectives. Sorry, I just want to point out o Olaf's being the bodyguard yeah. here for Maddie as he goes <laughs> to clear the jungle. Has a little bit of extra security there for himself. And that's going to be a little bit of a thorn in the side of the Echo as he's not going to be able to get as much XP. That'll set him back a little bit. And right now we're seeing a big engage here, a oh big no. push in the bot lane. There's the Echo going in once again. There's the stun from the Echo, and the Echo gets the kill on Rock Boom, leaving the support there. And now he's in the stretch of no man's land, but he's not going to get anything out of that. We're going to see oh, the flash one, come one. in in mid, and now Bakery Boy's going to go for the kill here. Will he be able to catch the Jace? And he just oh barely Lord. does it at the, the last Lord. second. What a kill. He autoed the ward there, scared me for a second, was able yeah. to pick that up. But yet again, McGill University setting up the dive ball lane, able, able to get another kill down there, now taking the whole turret, really prioritizing this ball lane, probably who are going to move towards that mid lane. Maddie, the one on the other side of the map, will very happily pick up this Rift Herald. And let's see where St. Clair choose to use this one. Should probably hold it until the next dragon's about to spawn, so you can spawn it somewhere and just take the dragon for free. But let's see how they decide to use it. If you do that, you won't be able to drive it. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna That's say. That's the new meta. It does a little bit more damage if you manage to drive it from downtown and crash it into the tower That plus yourself. you look pretty darn cool Tokyo drifting with the Herald. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just driving that thing into a big old tower and it just looks great. But the other advantage is Herald now spawns minions, right? The little Void Might, Belveth passive, whatever. Um, 
So it like you can literally just crash Harold without a wave, and you you have a wave now. Congratulations. <laughs> so it like Harold is definitely stronger than what it used to be. Uh, oh, hold on here. Okay, never mind. I thought <laughs> I thought Draven was going in on that one, but uh, taking a look at the items, we already have a Yomu's completed on both Jace and Draven. Um, we have a um, Hextech Rocket Belt on the Echo, uh, and unfortunately Rumble still doesn't have his first item. Uh, oh. Well, he's taking a huge engagement, <laughs> getting a kill, and now it's looking like the Hakan is running for his life through the jungle, trying to find some way out of this mess that he's got himself in. He's going to hide in the bush. He's going to go for the engage, hits the blast, but what moves there? He's getting the dodge. He's going to go for the execute, but I don't know if it's going to count, but it goes over to the support anyways. It's better than going over to anybody else. So things are looking good for St. Clair College, managing to get a kill out of that whole mess. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Although, um, fair warning, we have a Voltaic Cyclosword. Oh, hold on. Rift Herald Charge, let's go! <laughs> he hits it. What a drift there from River, and that's going to be a tower down for St. Clair as well. It looks like things are starting to go their way. Things are falling into place. It's starting to snowball. Tokyo Drift V2. Oh, wait, what? He's going the wrong way, but Ricky was able to get the solo kill. He might take the Rift Herald all the way over to mid lane here. Never mind. Uh, uh, I don't know where that one ended up. And <laughs> interesting yeah, trip happens. there by Ricky. Maybe getting used to the new Herald changes. Actually, it's a bug. There's a bug oh, in the game bug. where, depending on, like, I think it's the angle that you go into the Rift Herald. It's where your mouse is currently sitting. So if you click the back of the Rift Herald, which is where the, the eye is, so you think you'd click it there, it'll face it backwards. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't drive the right way. And it's really, really annoying because then all your teammates are pinging you, like, what are you doing? And it's like, well, it's just, I just wanted to drive the car, man. Oh, oh this is dangerous. Oh. Oh, Echo's gonna go in. That's a huge dive in from mid from the bush there. Oh, but here. there, the other jungler's there to meet him there. And now Lonzo's gonna try and take him down. Wow, the Echo's at oh. one HP. And that's a nice double kill from Rock Boom. He's gonna keep going in. He's gonna try and take down the Draven. And I don't know if he's gonna be able to do it. And then just get back safe to tower. And the Rumble's gonna spray fire, some cover, cover fire down. Let them oh, get out there. But the really goes in. And that's gonna be a double kill going over to them. Only one left. It's just the Jace. He's gonna run to the oh, other tower. Old. But that's a little bit of a mistake there. He's all vulnerable right now. And that's gonna be a team. Ace for the side of McGill University. Or oh, for, wow. <laughs> oh, they got aced. My bad. On the side of St. Clair College. <laughs> An absolutely brutal fight there. They try to go on Rock Boom early with the Echo, but they're not able to find it. And after that, Ricky, level 13, owned this Olaf, just ran through their whole team, killed everyone one by one with Bakery Boy and Maddie putting out the damage on that tower dive. Such well played. Now they're going to take the Dragon for themselves, and they have now blown this game completely wide open. Yeah, no, it's not looking good for the side of McGill University here. Uh, they don't have the tower advantage. They, I mean, they're not looking great on objectives anymore. Uh, they only have one dragon on the top, and the current soul is uh, an infernal, which means that's a lot of AD and AP heading to the side of St. Clair College. The further on into the game that goes, the more dangerous that infernal soul gets. Um, but most importantly, if we look at the kills, uh, Olaf is 5-0, and oh, Brand is 3-0, and oh, Irelia is 2-1, and one, and the only ones that are sort of struggling is Lucian, who's 1-1-3, one, one, and three, and Melio, who's 1-2-6. and six. So, on the side of St. Clair, they're looking pretty unkillable, which isn't good news. But, with that being said, they definitely do have the damage to take out and get those shutdowns. If then if they can get those shutdowns, they could recover pretty darn easily. But it's the condition that they get the shutdowns, which is going to be hard. I don't see a way of McGill University killing Ricky for the rest of this game. <laughs> He's up 5k gold on his laner, and as soon as he presses ult, he's just going to run straight at that Draven, chop him down, and I don't think he can take much damage after that. So it's looking very, very hard for McGill. Drave, uh, Baron's going to be spawning in about 30 seconds. I think St. Clair are looking to play yeah, towards the top side of the map, and I think Ricky might even stay in the bot lane the entire time, just chopping away, forcing a couple members to match him, which should give St. Clair a free Baron, and they do it pretty quickly with the brand Irelia and Lucian, but there's going to be the Echo Vault forced out very, very early. That should almost secure them that top tier two, and after that, they're going to look for maybe the play onto the Baron. Yeah, the play onto the Baron, just forcing that, I mean, if something we see T1 do a lot um, in the 
competitive play, and it's something that's been wow, starting. Wow, massive team fight breaking out. Sorry to interrupt you there. We're going to see the Irelia come out, and Draven's going to get shut down as well. They're all diving in there. They're all getting a little bit dangerously low and not securing any kills, but Maddie gets the burn kill there. Now they're going to chase the Lucian up to the top there and try and get the kill there, but they don't do it. Public enemy number one gets the kill as well. Rakan very, very low. The Draven still standing strong, but he's not going to have the health to be able to contest any of those fights here. Now the Rumble chasing all the low health targets down. Maddie gonna get one more, but it looks like Draven gets a kill, or <laughs> doesn't get the kill there. Unable to save his support. It was not a good fight for St. Clair, actually. Considering how far ahead they are, Miguel was able to pick off Bakery Boy very, very early, and Rockboom fell to low HP. But then when Ricky came into the fight with his ultimate and Ghost, just running everyone down, displacing everyone from one another, they're able to find the cleanup. Maddie finding a nice little kill onto Rakan there towards the end. And St. Clair come out ahead, but when you're ahead this much gold, you don't want to be going even with your opponents. You want to really make those power plays and just end the game as soon as possible. Especially just looking at the CS. I mean, look at Olaf CS versus oh my Rubble. God. He's 208 versus Rubble's 135. Oh, That's no. just, that can tell you the story right there. It looks like they are going to start postulating towards Baron here. They're going to start prepping for a battle. Clear the, the crab there. Try and clear down mid, push the waves up, and make as many things go wrong for McGill as possible. Yeah, no, looking at the items here, a uh, three item Olaf at uh, 21 minutes is terrifying. And oh, hold on here, we got something going on in the jungle. Echo getting caught out by a three man. Gonna dash out to safety, but uh, had to waste his ult for it. So that's something that they're not gonna be able to use in a further team fight while it's on cooldown. Uh, so they can they can siege here actually. St. Clair can siege really easily or they can go for Baron. Uh, Olaf in the top lane, though, might turn into a problem for them. Yeah, without a doubt, Olaf is going to be running through that Jace anytime he wants to, but he decides to move his way over to that mid lane. He's going to try and hack away that tier 1. He's going to get collapsed upon. Let's see how Rakan decides to play this as soon as he W's in. Probably would see the ult come out there from Ricky, but not going to see an engage there. Bakery Boy going to look to take this bot to tier 2 if he could just get some help from a couple of teammates. Should be pretty easy. Maddie lands a nice stun onto that rumble, and that's a very, wow. very... Easy pickup, being so fed already, but Aurelia will fall yet again to that Draven. Manny now has to get out, does not want to give that shutdown over, but he is so, so tanky. Let's see what St. Clair can do here in the 3v3. Manny going to do a lot of damage with that brand. Rockboom now falling up. Echo, he gets his ultimate back, but the damage is going to be there. Rockboom will find the kill. The Koeing will come out. Will he find the Rakan there? Living on 1HP. Jace is here as well. I think St. Clair need to look to back up here, but the Draven is going to walk up just a little bit too far. He will get taken down. Rockwell oh with the moves, God. able to find two. Now gonna look for the third onto the Jace. Will be able to find it, and that yeah. should be the game. That's a team kill, triple kill for Madian. Just such great mechanics on this play there. No, that was insane. You can see that Rockboom knows how to play that Lucian, and you can see that it was practiced with his uh, with uh, Alf Alfonso? Mm -hmm. Alonso. Al Alonso, sorry. Uh, like it was super practiced, right? The Melio and Lucian is strong in the meta right now. And most importantly, it is terrifying to go up against because of the healing, right? Enchanters are pretty weak usually in the meta, and they still are, except if you're playing with Lucian. Because uh, apparently Lucian is the only one that's allowed to play with, well, that and Aphelios, but Aphelios is 400 years, we don't talk about Aphelios. And even then, Aphelios isn't that strong in this current meta, but Lucian with most enchanters, most predominantly Melio, is terrifying. Solely due to the fact that you saw it, Lucian was frontlining. An ADC is not supposed to frontline. That's the tank's job. But you know what? Nah, I'm just gonna tank. Because uh, he can, he has the healing, he has the ability to do that, and worse comes to worse, Melio can put out a Q and peel for him. And that is so strong. But yeah, oh, hold on here. We're going to have something going on into the jungle top side. Oh, that's going to be a huge engage by the Echo. He gets the stun off on the Olaf, but that was not the person to pick. That was the tank. Not going to make much use out of that, but that stops the enemy from small snowballing too hard there. Bakery Boy still chugging along here down in bot lane. It looks like we're going to see the Baron start coming over St. Clair College. Yeah, here, McGill University wants to contest, but they don't know if they can just purely due to the fact that 
they're gonna get out damaged here. Uh, Sinclair oh Diff. Oh, what a brand ult there. And he gets the kill out of it. Wow, what teamwork there. And the Lucian ult's gonna just keep them at bay. And that's Baron going over to St. Clair College. And I don't know, at this point, it's looking like this is definitely gonna be game for them. 21 and 6. Look at the scoreboard. Look at the items. Look at the I can't gold. see it going any other way unless a miracle happens for McGill. They're gonna need much more than a miracle for this. Look at the damage from Rock Boom. Half HP just from that. And Bakery Boy in the 1v1 against the J is going to do a lot of damage there. The Echo is going to throw out that orb there, but the Flash will come out. Look how much damage coming out from Maddie, bouncing from player to player. There's going to be three kills picked up for St. Clair, and they should be able to just march through and finish off the game here. Let's see how they decide to do it. Taking all three inhibitors, just going to be impossible to stop them here. Maddie, 12, 0, and 4 on this brand. Such insane damage the later the game goes, and they're going to hack away at these turrets and try to finish off the game. Rock Boom trying to get a couple extra kills there. The Rumble is going to be able to survive, but they're going to look to kill them in the spawn. They're going to let them survive and hack away at that Nexus. Wow. Game one, going over to St. Clair College, a very dominant one at that. Yeah, most definitely here. We saw St. Clair. It looks like the Void Grub slash Void Monster Doctrine wins over the Drag Doctrine and Bot Lane Doctrine. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the reason why they weren't in their chairs there is just because it's a three minute delay. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it yeah. just looked like Alonso. ghosts were playing there. Alonso Sorry. Was there. Yeah. No, they weren't even at the keyboard, don't worry. They they, they, they played with their brains. Um, uh, sorry to interrupt brains. you there. Yeah. But uh, we can kind of see that the meta is shifting more towards the top side, which for top leaders like me, woohoo, we get to have ganks. <laughs> Let's go, boys. We're not on an island anymore. Uh, but when it comes to the bot lane, of course, it really makes things a little bit more tough. Um, but you're probably going to see a lot of solo queue nowadays. That's going to be the bot lane flaming the jungler for not coming to help. And I mean, you see the situation that St. Clair's bot lane was in. You could probably see it happen in your solo queue games where, yeah, that, that's exactly what happens. Why is Echo always bot? He's ganking us perma. And well, yeah, it's because the top lane was the win condition here. And being able to do that with the Void Grubs, with the Herald that opens up so many towers... Maybe we're seeing a big, big, big change in the meta, and I'm really, really excited for it. Yeah, it's just, it's curious because it seems so dead even, and at points it seemed like St. Clair is in the losing position, ignoring the Olaf top. That was like pretty much <laughs> yeah. the whole win condition right there. Just <laughs> Ricky just going so ham up there, just getting kill after kill after kill. Just that first gank from Maddie really came in clutch there, and... Overall, it seemed it was so interesting to see how the Void Grubs did end up mattering. Even though they're down a few, they missed the first few. They really uh, brought it all together from the mid game onwards. And Theo, do you have any thoughts before I close this out? I mean, game. it was just a very, very uh, slow and uh, well-played game from St. Clair. They didn't panic when they were getting dove bot. They said, okay, we'll take uh, the sacrifice and just yep. uh, play around their top lane. We know how strong Olaf is into this comp, and we saw it late game just doing so, so much. And Matty as well on that brand was so, so fed. You could see one combo. He was just one-shotting anybody he hit. Oh, so yeah. It was just a well-played uh Calm from St. Clair. They played around the uh, basically jungle top lane very, very well. Mm -hmm. Got ahead early, scaled well, and just finished off the game very, very smoothly. Yeah, so that's going to be the first game going over to the St. Clair College varsity team. But we'll see if McGill will manage to make something work in the next game. So we're going to throw it to a quick break and we'll be back with the draft for game two.
and welcome to game two of our Seelaw St. Clair College versus McGill esports game. Last game, McGill had a rough time, so we'll see if the picks and bans will be different, see if they learned from their mistakes. We'll see if St. Clair will do the same thing or if they'll switch it up and try something new. And let's see these first picks and bans. I'm really excited to see what these are going to be. And the uh, first ooh. ban is going to be Twisted Fate ban once uh, yeah. again coming out from McGill. Hmm. All right, that's kind of an odd ban. I don't know why they're picking Twisted Fate. Maybe it's a pocket pick, um, but I don't think, like, I haven't seen it that much in pro play. Uh, okay, the Aegis Shocks ban makes a lot of sense on the side of St. Clair. It's just, I mean, it's a staple of the top lane. You don't want to go up against that thing. Ooh, I think they learned their lesson. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to go up against a brand no. jungle, and that's a smart ban. We'll see what the others are going to be. There's the Pantheon ban once again. Maybe that's just a mainstay of the middle yeah. players. Maybe that's more of a comfort pick for them. So maybe that's going to be the ban going out there. I think it's definitely more of a comfort type of ban than a uh, meta ban. Uh, okay, yep, the Olaf. Yep, that, yep, that adds up. <laughs> All right, so they're bending a lot of the champions that St. Clair played uh, last time, but St. Clair has a pretty big pool of champions, so they got to watch out what they're banning to kind of correlate with their comp, right? So we're going to be seeing uh, potentially some interesting comps coming out of St. Clair, kind of to shape things up, maybe more of a poke comp. We're going to see. Uh, the Seraphine ban. Yeah, I 100% approve. Yeah, Seraphine is a very annoying champ to play against. Do you have any thoughts on that, Theo? If I see her <laughs> playing ADC in my games, I just want to turn off the game. But we're going to see the Lilia <laughs> first pick from McGill, also making sure that Maddie can't get it. They're going to decide to play it. A very interesting pickup. AP in the jungle yet again for McGill. Interesting what they're going to... Uh, draft top and mid now if they're gonna because last game they went AP top oh. as we see the cork he made a very, very permanent oh. pick right now so much damage we'll have just safe farm and mid lane get those items and we'll do immense damage Lee Sin mm. also a very strong champion in the meta right now very interesting pickup for Maddie and not a bad matchup into the Lilia. Yeah, the funny thing about Corky is you, he's either the worst character in the game, you never see him, or he's the best character in the game. And yep. once again, we're seeing Nico being picked out for 
McGill University. That's going to be an interesting pick. I think that's probably going to be mid. No, it's either yeah, mid that's a Nico mid. They're probably not playing. Oh yeah, yeah, support. it's a Nico mid. It's not support. Flitzcrank support. Pretty good call, but I don't know about picking the support before we see the enemy ADC. That's kind of a ooh. Well, yeah, yep. That's the response. Brom to just completely counter the. The Blitzcrank, that's going to make the Blitzcrank's life a lot more difficult because, I mean, now Blitzcrank is basically just an extra dash for Braum to proc his passive. Uh, so that's really, really dangerous to play around. But we're going to be seeing the uh, the next ban phase here. The Cassante ban, very, very logical. You don't want to go up against that. Uh, mainly with the new walls. The new walls from the season. Oh, yeah, you can carry them so far. You can far. literally send someone from the river. <laughs> To under your tower. It's ridiculous. Uh, the Ash Band makes sense. Oh, they bit my gin. I wanted <laughs> to count also, four. <laughs> they also banned the Lucian out. They don't yep. want to have to deal with that again. I think a enough, lot of enough. ADCs this game, which is an interesting play. Don't want to have to deal with that. But that's all that's really left to pick on both that sides. That is true. So that's fair enough. We'll see what they do end up picking. Rock Boom, of course, going Ooh. with the Tristana. That's a signature Ooh. pick there. It has been banned out for, it feels like, forever against Rockboom, <laughs> but today we're going to get to see it. He probably hasn't even played it that much because he just always has a band against him, doesn't get a chance to show it off, but it's going to be into the Callista. I don't even think that's that bad of a matchup for that balling, but could be a bit difficult if they uh, McGill decides to play around their bot lane again, and they're going to pick up the Jax in the top lane. Ooh. Very strong pick, but there is a hard counter to Jax, and that is Gragas. Basically <laughs> makes the lane unplayable yes. for Jax, so a very nice We're seeing the team comp here, coming out from St. Clair College, and I think they're looking way stronger e here in, in this game than they even did at the beginning of game one. And let's see very soon what, <laughs> if that's going to hold true, as I think we're going to get into oh, game no. here very very soon but looking at this team comps they're both very strong team comps on both sides but i think i'll give the edge to st Clair college right now as it's just looking Ooh. a little bit more cohesive as a team yeah those team fights on the side of st Clair, nasty just like you've got brom that's going to protect tristana when she goes in you've got the gragas bomb that's going to basically either spread them all out or insect someone or like there's so much potential to that you've got the Lee Sin who can insect and you've got the Corky who's just a powerhouse of damage but the most important part is that Corky usually rushes malignants that is a magic penetration item on his rockets that helps the Gragas deal even more damage it's going to be insane Speaking I don't of know rockets. how they're going to do Let's rock it right into our game. Let's see our players here. They're locked in. They're ready. See Tommy in the back there <laughs> watching them. He's usually in the back here today, but now he's just cheering on the Saints. And here we are back on the Summoner's Rift. This is the game for all the marbles here. St. Clair College is looking to close this one out, and McGill University looking to win this one and try and bring this to a game three. I got to respect the, the, the Corky Gorgi uh, skin. It's very, very good skin. It's looking like it might be <laughs> invade, or they're just waiting to counter the invade. It's an interesting play here. They're all lining up here in the bottom bush. While they sent Blitzcrank in the top jungle, it's looking like a actually an invade. A lot more than a Blitzcrank up in that top lane, but fortunately for St. Clair, nobody's there. They're just all dancing and waiting for someone to come near this bush, but there will be nobody. So a pretty basic start to the game. We're going to see Cole on the cork, and we're going to see a Ruby Crystal on the Gragas to start. A bit maybe unconventional, but they're yeah, looking for so. that scaling aspect. And just to, uh, the Gragas wants to get his first item as soon as possible. Corky wants to get as much gold income as possible throughout the game. And uh, the two, three item spike when he gets those packages in those team fights, that's really what they're going to be playing around. Yeah, most definitely here. We can see the phase rush on Gragas. So opting for a little bit more of a, a hit and run style. Wait, hold on. Why is the Callista in the mid? No, no, that's Nico. I have been fooled. You got tricked by the ability there. It just got <laughs> Nikoed. How? Come on, man. We're on the observer's POV. I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, no. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, it's right. Gragas. Uh, Gragas going for the phase rush. Um, so definitely more of a hit and run. Usually you're going to see him running grasp lately. But uh, it's going to be interesting here. What is the Leah cooking? I mean, Lee Sin was invading the red buff with the help of his ball in. So Lilia was not able to get her camp. And now Bakery Boy is going to slow down that clear just a little bit more. It's going to take some HP for himself. But 
Playing the Corky, he is able to play super duper passive. He's still gonna go try to disrupt this Lilia from taking her camp. She is still level one. Bakery Boy is gonna drop to one HP though, will be forced to get out and this Lilia should finally be able to pick up that first camp. But a great start for Maddie though. He's able to get the bot side camps of the Lilia now will make his way into the mid lane. There's gonna be a fight here. Maddie's able to dodge out that Lilia, but this isn't too good for St. Clair. They don't have too much early damage. Should have just been looking to clear here, but the red buff by Maddie could be look to be taken here. Very interesting play so far in the early game. Maddie's gonna land that Q, but probably not gonna take it. He will decide to take it, so that's a very dangerous engage from him there. But Lilian Bakery Boy trying to defend the jungle from the enemies. Good trades here in top lane for the Grag. is gonna be able to set up so much damage onto the Jax there. We'll be looking for a slow kill soon, but the Jax should back in TP. Not a good start for him in lane there. And Lilia is making her way around to that red buff, so Maddie just gonna give that one up as the early jungle pressure goes well for Miguel University. Oh, a big dive from Rock Room there, trying to get as much damage as he can, and that's gonna be some big damage going over to the Glista. Not gonna be able to secure the kill though. And now, are a little bit worse for wear out of that exchange. They're both at half health. No flashes though on the side of Miguel. That's that, pretty important. That is true, that is true here. Greg is definitely playing, uh, Definitely playing well in terms of zoning. I mean, Gragas is, like, when he's played top, it's a pain for the person that isn't Gragas. For the Gragas, it's quite an enjoyable experience, I, I must say so myself. Uh, but it is so uninteractive for the... Oh, hold on here. It's a kill. Yeah, it's going to be a for major first kill going over the bot lane once again. The Lee Sin trying to make something happen there, but not able to do so. We see a TP come bot from Nico, but a little bit too late, but a good assurance to save the bot laner's life. Great hook there from Blitzcrank on Alonzo. He was just not expecting it at all, and taking those two tower shots gives first blood over to Gris yet again on that ADC. McGill University is just doing everything to protect their balling as well. You can see the Nico instantly TPing to the balling, but now Maddie's gonna find him, trying to make his way over to mid lane, going to have their HP, and that is gonna allow Quirk to just push that wave in. Void Grubs are spawning in about 30 seconds, I believe, so that might be the next crucial big fighting point in this game. Yeah, here, I'm not sure what Lee Sin is going to be opting for in terms of his build. Uh, Lee Sin, nowadays, very versatile, uh, going for some lethality builds and some more bruiser-centric builds. Uh, so we might see, considering that he went for the Scorched Claw, a little bit more of a lethality build, uh, which is going to be very, very interesting, because if he can get ahead, lethality Lee Sin is a terrifying uh, thing. Like, mainly with Hubris, uh, one of the new AD items for assassins, um, he can get a really big snowball going and that thing will not stop, like, at all. Uh, good trading though in the mid lane, and Nico really trying to get the, the, the Corgi behind, but not really, uh, I just said Corgi instead of Corgi. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at the dog. Lilia did get one Void Grub here. Corky trying to stop this Void Grub from being uh -oh. taken, but he's a little bit too weak right now. He manages to get out, and now it's Gragas' turn to try and hold them off as the Lee Sin, I think, is trying to get there in dime, but he's not going to be able to. Now the Jax is coming in as the cavalry, and Gragas is in a really bad spot right now, but he manages to get out there through the back of the river there. That's going to be all three first Grubs going over to the side of McGill. Yeah, definitely here we're seeing... Oh, both. Ricky stole one. Oh, he did. He oh. got one. You're right. He got the yoinks. All right. That is actually really good. Um, so we're seeing kind of that top philosophy uh, McGill University picking up, right? They're saying, okay, clearly going for the Void Grubs was the advantage last game. Let's go for the Void Grubs and just try and beat them to their own game, right? Um, so we're kind of going to see how that plays out for the side of St. Clair University, uh, or bleh, University College. Uh, see how they're going to play it out. See how they're going to adapt to that. Uh, oh, hold on here. That's a little bit of a dangerous situation you got yourself in, Brom. Does get a hooked, oh, has no. to fly. Oh no. Pop oh, Blossom on the side of fight there. Yeah, gonna get the grapple, and that's gonna be all two of them going down there. Thanks. All three engaging the fight. That's gonna be a double kill going for Kalista. That's gonna be a major boon for the bot lane. And right now, McGill is looking very, very good. 3 and 0. Oh. St. Clair not really having the same energy that they did had in the last game, especially in the top lane. Not not any victory going either way there. Right now, Lilia is just being 
queen of objectives right now, taking every single one, and that early infernal drake's gonna hurt. Yeah, most definitely here, as we can see. Objective control-wise, uh, McGill University is definitely ahead. The only thing that I'm gonna have to say is a strong point is that St. Clair is ahead in terms of CS. Uh, both Gragas is zoning um, Jax off the way very well, and Corky is doing relatively well in terms of CS. Granted, it's not a huge CS lead, but it is a present one. Um, and Tristana is ahead in terms of CS. Granted, she's she doesn't have that advantage when it comes to kills, but it is a CS advantage, and it can definitely make up for kills, right? I mean, you only need 15 CS to make up for a kill. So that's really important to keep in mind. Without a doubt, yeah, the Callista is going to be the focal carry point yet again for McGill University. We'll see how they can protect her this game. In the top lane, Ricky doing so well for himself, as you said, up 20 CS on the Jacks in a favorable matchup. So good stuff from him, but all objectives taken very early on from McGill University. He's just going to be getting these waves in on Greg. He's going to do a little poke damage, but kind of hard to solo kill when the Jax is playing this safe. It's going to be all on St. Clair College to somehow find a pick onto this Callista in these team fights. Yeah, it looks like this Callista is alone, but I think Leah's prepping for a gank right now. Does St. Clair have vision right now? I don't think they have vision there, but I think their sixth sense is tingling. That something's amiss. The support's not there. They know they're playing far back. Will they fall for the trap? We shall see. No, they're just gonna keep going and Lily's gonna back. So now we're back into a duel in the bot lane. And St. Clair just controlling the wave amazingly, getting a lot more CS than the other bot laner right now. Yeah, when it comes to objectives though, so the Void Grubs are going to be coming back up uh, very soon, I think. Uh, if my memory yeah, is correct. Minute, they spawn every five minutes. Yeah, they spawn every five minutes, so they should be coming up, uh, yeah, in a minute. Uh, oh, hold on here. We got a fight in the top lane. Lee Sin with the kick going to execute the Jax. Wow, that was, that was very fast. That was spontaneous. Uh, so that's definitely going to result in the advantage or I guess the priority towards the Void Grubs uh, for this next spawn. Uh, but they do choose to recall, kind of the cash in, I guess. Um, Mike clear out his Krogs and then head to the Void Grubs, uh, which means Lydia will get there first. Uh, just looking at her clear right now. So we might see a really big fight come out on, uh, on the Void Grubs really, really soon. Uh, maybe on spawn, but I'm not 100% sure. And this Lee Sin is going to get very strong very soon later into the game. It looks like he's building Sundered Sky, I think, based yep. on the items he's buying right now. So that's going to be a very scary one-shot build coming out from Lee Sin, or nearly one shot. He's going to do and huge healing. burst damage. Yeah. It's no, Sundered Sky definitely a really strong item. Ooh, hold on here. Lee Sin does end up getting the first one. Dashes out. He's not going to be able to contest against the Jax and the no. Lilia here. Both of them are there. And the Blitz there is back up. Looks like they stole one, depriving McGill of six Void Grubs, but they're going to be able to get up to four right now. Rock Boom rotating over. Probably going to try and go with this team clear grab right now. That's another two going over. St. Greg is trying to take a fight here. He's going to get ignited. He's going to get first and down. Maddie's not going to be able to help him. He can't take the 1v3. Now, Rockroom's gonna go in and try and take out Gris right now. He's getting very, very low. His support's there. It looks like it's gonna be a kill. Will Callista be able to get out? No! Rockroom does get his first kill in the bot lane, and maybe we'll be able to shift the momentum his way now. That was a 600 gold kill, too, because they had the 300 gold shutdown. So, really, really a big amount of gold heading towards... Um yeah, heading towards the Tristana here. Uh, we see the Corky actually starting off with a Hex Drinker just because, I mean, and it's a pretty staple start when you're going up against AP to start Hex Drinker, right, on Corky. Um, but it definitely slows down uh, the speed at which he gets his gold um, and his items, right? So we're kind of going to see him probably go for it back really soon. Um, and he is taking his tier, right? So he's probably going to go for something along the lines of Monimune Malignance. Um, although he might not build mal Milligan Ins at all, at all. I mean, I know it's been played a lot in pro play, but I guess depending on the situation, it might not um, get played here. But definitely using his rockets really well here, just getting the damage in. But he is low on mana. Nico is not. She does have the resources to spare to try and get the kill. The TP is going to come in here from the Gragas, but that is not the place you want to be in. He is getting CC locked and cut down. Yeah, that was... Uh, 
Not the best GP. That's, that's a report. That's a report. So that's, that was a terrible <laughs> teleport. You could see the idea. He's trying to save his teammate. And uh, he did that, but it cost him his life. The second dragon's gonna be spawning sometimes too, but look at the fight that St. Clair able to find here. Huge Braum ult, able to find three Ooh. into the Lee Sin kick. A couple knocked up. Rockboom gonna look for the resets, is able to find one. Gonna look to jump onto that Lilia. Does he have the damage to clean her up? They should be able to kill the Nico here and one HP on this Lilia. Surely they're gonna look for a dive, but the Sleep and the Hulk is huge onto Rockboom. He's left to live on one HP. Picks up the Lilia, picks up the Blitzcrank, and the that's package. four kills for Rockboom yeah. now on that Tristana. Such a great team fight. Started off by Alonzo's ultimate on that Braum, and now St. Clair can take a real big advantage in this game too. Definitely. That was nasty. Yeah. I mean, like, just, I mean, okay, let's be honest, the Nico Pop Blossom was kind of off. <laughs> um, a little bit off, but... That's also going to accelerate the bot lane into yeah. the lead now. They're always up on CS, but now they're up on kills as well. They're going to be in a very good spot going forward, and that's a good dragon going over to St. Clair. This might be where they can start to catch up. Yeah, Tristana finishing up her Kraken Slayer along with her boots. Going to be really, really strong here. Callista only has her Bork along with her boots. Uh, so Bork, I mean, it's a staple weapon or item to get on Callista. But is it effective? They don't have any tanks. I and mean, Gragas is the only tank. And Gragas, what is that build? Book, book, book. Man <laughs> is studying. I mean, he is in college, library. but <laughs> he just bought the whole library. It doesn't what seem in to be working out great for him right now. As he is 0-2 right now, so the studying's not going well. It's not going great, but hey, maybe maybe it'll click eventually, and hopefully once he gets well, those few main items. League of Legends is like a group project. He's doing yep. all the studying while the rest of the team is putting <laughs> together the rest of the project. So he's doing his part. He's doing the, the knowledge. He's making sure he's got everything he needs. And now Rogboom, it's going to be up to him and Bakery Boy to really put the nail on the coffin in this game. It is a, only a 3k gold lead, but Ricky Boy should be able to take this turret and look how far he is scaling. About to get that mana mute fully completed. Has the Hex Drinker and it's going to be the Rift Herald started up here by St. Clair. Will be uncontested and they're just using their wallets to bully McGill University around the map. Yeah, most definitely here they have the priority and they are using it effectively. Um, one of the things that I want to point out, the Lee Sin did complete a Thundered Sky and wow. I don't even Sorry, know Sorry, Bakery Boy just it. died there to the Lilia and bot Wait, lane. What? I didn't even see that. Yeah, it popped up on screen just now. And oh, now it looks like Ragus got a big bumbo there, yeah. <laughs> and now it does get the kill though. But sorry, you were saying <laughs> I interrupted you. Yeah, I was talking about the uh, Lee Sin probably opting for more of a bruiser build instead of the standard um, standard lethality build. Well, I guess the standard is the bruiser build. Uh, but, oh, hold on. The ignite here. Is it going to kill him? No, the heal. Wait, where did that heal come from? Uh, <laughs> maybe the Sundered Sky there? Maybe the heal proc a little bit after that? So well, no, because you have to auto attack it. He did hit an auto attack. Maybe, I don't know what the delay is. It should be instant, right? But Maybe it was like on the Grom? Perhaps, perhaps, but no. here we are. They're gonna take the mid tower and another engagement here, 3v2. And it oh, looks like Alonzo gets hooked in there, but he might be able to get out. Will he have enough health? Out. And he's just gonna get wait, wait. over and over. Already out. gets out, there we go. That's what it's like being a tank. You can take some, some hits here and still be able to get out if you have enough determination and movement. Hallelujah. Continuing to clear. Looks like something's gonna happen here in River. The Blitz is waiting to trap whoever dares to push up. Oh, right good hook. Amazing hook there. And now he's going to oh, get caught out there. They're under tower. And now Rockboom's going to go down. And so is Lee Sin. Maybe he oh. can get a kill out of oh, Maddie. Bakery Boy. There's Bakery Boy going in. Trying oh, to get oh. some misses. Oh, no. Uh, and Bakery Boy gets the kill on the Nico there in mid. That was a very messy fight. But I think St. Clair managed to make it equal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of missed abilities there. Uh, including the Pop Blossom from Nico. That is, uh, yeah, that was a noopsie daisies there. Rock Boom going down, though, is a shutdown, which is massive for the mm -hmm. side of McGill University. Uh, I think they really have to play around their Callista and, and the Lilia. That's their big damage dealers this game. And have to. they need these extended longer fights. They don't want just one or two kills. You know, Callista and Lilia are just so good in those extended fights with their movement speed and their ability to kite very, very well. So 
It's gonna be interesting. You could see in the top lane, Ricky's up 50 CS on the Gragas, so his studying is definitely paying off so far. It will give him an uh, economical lead, which is a good thing to have in League of Legends. Yeah, it's looking like a little bit of a lane swap here with top and bot, as both top laners are in the bot lane right now. Let's just clearing out the wards, doing his job as the support, providing vision for the team. Looks like not everyone's just kind of playing their lanes right now. Aside from McGill, they're gearing up for a team fight. It looks like both teams just scoping out mid, prepping, putting up vision. Yeah, waves. looking for the drag here. Because it is coming up very, very soon, 30 seconds. Oh, hold on here. We might have to start a team fight. Corky bombs are coming out. That just looks like they disengaged though, because that wasn't advantageous for McGill there. And St. Clair just didn't have enough CC to keep him there. Yeah, they're looking to place the wards just set up for drag, and then I think it's just going to be a war on vision here. They're just basically going to say, okay, well, if we have the vision, we're going to take it. But if we don't have it, we're just going to leave. Like, there's no point finding this. Uh, mainly with the new, like, the way that the map is built. Um, like, it is a, at a huge disadvantage if you are trying to take the river from your jungle like if whoever's in the uh, is in the river first has the priority over those objectives uh, mainly when you have that vision set up uh, so it's gonna be really really hard here for McGill University to get oh hold on here brand getting caught out by the blitzcrank pop loss I'm gonna connect gets the Tristana might go Corky gets the kill onto the Nico not gonna get enough damage onto rock boom but okay, Lilia does pick up the kill onto Rock Boom. Uh, a lot of fighting here. Yeah, a lot of fighting here in the mid jungle on the red buff indeed. A lot of McGill is low, and I think that's gonna be a double kill going over to Gragas there. Triple. And that's gonna be a triple Jeez. from Ricky there. Public enemy number one living up to his name, and now they can get, or they did get, did they get the dragon or are they continuing to fight no, it right now? The dragon hasn't been started yet. But I, th I think they did start it, but he hopped off yeah. of it mid fight there. Oh, okay, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, again, war to jungle, on war to jungle, that's the difference. You win because you warded the jungle. Um, so, yeah, that's going to be the drag going instantly to St. Clair College. Going to put them at the advantage for the dragons. Um, ability, haste, and attack speed coming from the Hextech Drake. Definitely going to be useful here, mainly on the Tristana, which relies so much on attack speed. Um, to be honest, things are looking a lot uh, sighted for St. Clair. But there are angles of like to come back here. You have the Callista that does have some pretty good items. Uh, it's just a question of really getting the peel for the Callista. Maybe not looking for the engage, but looking for the reaction that might be able to um, get them the win here on the side of McGill. But the problem is most of their champions are proactive. Nigo is proactive. She's looking to do an engage. Same for Blitzcrank, right? So it's hard to play those champions from behind. Um, so here we're kind of going to see how McGill University tries to adapt to that situation. Baron is going to be started up here Ooh. by the Saints. All four members are here. Corky, I think, picked up the package as well. He's going to be making his way over here, but it should be very, very free. I don't know how McGill can contest. They just are so far behind, but it looks like they're going to give it one final push. St. Clair is going to look to hop off as they have a vision all over the enemies. But it's going to be looking like a fight angle from side of St. Clair. Corky is going to package straight in. They're going straight on to that Callista. That's a pick. Huge pop. Lost him onto four, but not enough damage as the Nico goes down. Rockpool now going to get the reset on that Tristan as Corky gets the second kill of the fight. Bakery Boy doing so much damage with that package and finally engage will surely give St. Clair the Baron and that should put the nail in the coffin. Yeah, yeah I know, that fight was terrifying. Uh, the Pop Blossom did connect this time. The problem is, Nico is just so far behind right now in both CS and kills. She's been looking at a gray screen a little bit too long, and now she doesn't have the damage to actually have b a big effect on those team fights. And we are seeing it now, right? Um, so it's going to be terrifying to see what St. Clair can achieve. Yeah, this is looking like it's all going St. Clair's way. They had a little bit of a rough start there being very behind for a while but now once again it's like <laughs> I'm just getting deja vu from the last game they managed to pick it all back up from the ashes and make something work as they take this barren buff it's they're looking to end quite soon here they need one more team fight to seal the nail in the coffin here and that's what they're looking for Ooh. 
Blood Strike Hook almost connecting, but Corky now oh. knows where he is, so he's gonna get some free gold off of his first strike. We can see the Malignants now on Corky. That magic penetration is going to be terrifying, and his Hex Shrinker is coming back oh. up. Oh, hold on here. Blood Strike Hook. Hook. Hook will get the shutdown for uh, Corky right on that Lily out here. Uh, Jack's kind of getting at that point where he's a little bit stronger than the uh, Gragas, just scaling-wise. But we're going to see this little duel, how it's die. going. There's a lot of damage going out on the side oh of Gragas. Oh, the Jukes are good, but Jax is playing a little bit ahead here. Does end up getting the stun onto the Gragas, making it impossible for the Gragas to continue the fight. Uh, those prolonged fights definitely being something of a specialty when it comes to uh, Gragas letting him proc his passive multiple times in a row. Uh, the flash here coming out of the Tristana, dodging the Blitzcrank hook. Oh, Very well executed. We got a Lilia sleep coming out on three man. Oh, We're going to see a pop awesome. Going to connect. Going to lock down the Lee Sin. Rock Jax boom, getting rock that boom. shutdown. Rock Penta. Boom getting a triple kill. Getting Penta. a triple kill. And is that a quadra kill? That's a Penta. Penta kill. Oh, wait, hold on. That's, That's a, a Penta, Penta kill. kill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Theo god. Theo shot a mile away, the Petta all the way coming down the lane. That's gonna be a tower going down, and if this isn't game, this is gonna be 99% to it being game. They're gonna have a lot of time here to just push up, take down a couple towers, and prep for the next dragon in a minute here. If this is not it, I don't, I don't know think what they... will be. Maybe, they, yeah, they don't have the time for, because respawn timers are coming back up, but even then. I mean, that inhibitor is going to be a problem for that drag take because they can't have their whole team there because those super minions are going to be tearing through the minion waves and knocking at their doors. So it's going to be a very, very, very stressful take or it's just going to be completely undefended when it comes to the dragon. And I think they're opting for just not defending it whatsoever and letting St. Clair get the drag, try and get their CS back up, try and get their gold back up, try and recover from these losses. They did get a shutdown on the Lee Sin, but of course when it comes to Lee Sin, uh, it's just, it's a champion that can play so far ahead, and even if you shut him down, he has so much utility that he can already do so much, even if he's behind. So here that shutdown, not really worth much, plus it went to the Jax, which is kind of just your front line. He doesn't do much other than front line. Uh, in terms of damage, he's kind of far behind. Uh, Greg is here completing uh, his studying sessions, getting himself uh, a hex, uh, yeah, a rocket belt, uh, cosmic drive, and uh, uh, yeah, I think, no, that's not a ruby crystal. That is a bl uh, blight jewel, uh, giving him a, a Magic penetration. He still has his lost chapter. Which is <laughs> surprising. Because, uh, I mean, Gregus doesn't have that many mana problems. Once he's, like, ahead enough. Plus, he probably is running mana flow band. Um, but, I mean, I, I find it interesting that he still has it. I don't know what he's going to build it into. That's, like, the biggest question. Because lately, Gregus has been building a lot more towards tank items like uh, Rod of Ages. Uh, <laughs> so, him going for the AP build is interesting. Yeah, I just saw McGill was looking to try and contest Dragon there, but they just got there too late. And now St. Clair is just one away from Soul. McGill's in an awful spot here. They need to get the next Baron or else this is going to be it for them. They need any kind of bonus going into this game. But in this uh -oh. next team fight, that's going to be a big hook going up. That's going to be the Braum a little bit too tanky to want to deal with that right now. Lee Sin goes in. There's Pop Blossom trying to stop them there. Massive team fight happening. It looks like Turk goes down from Rock Boom and he's going to try and get another a kill. kill? Maddie gets killed. He's in there. He's in there. He's going for another one. He gets one. Oh, that guy's one. Oh, oh that my that god. god. Oh, the buffer oh, timer was perfect there. He's gonna try and go for another, gets Nico there, but he gets Shut taken down. out by the Lilia. Does find the Callista though, so it does get three back, but now it's gonna be the Lilia and the Blitzcrank up against the Brahmin Corky, and the Brahmin Corky is gonna back out. Uh, good fight for McGill University, considering the fact they're down 10k gold, they're able to go three for three and find the shutdown, but it might be just a little bit too late for them with the next Baron spawning in one minute. I'm sure St. Clair is just gonna take that one for free and just march it down into the base and end the game. Yeah, that definitely does seem like uh, a good angle to take when it comes to this game. They do have two inhibitors down, I believe, uh, for the side of McGill University. So really hard to contest that Baron fight um, without, you know, losing either one of their Nexus turrets uh, or just straight up losing if someone decides to split push. Um, which, by the way, Gragas got a little bit of a buff. Now his um, W actually applies to towers. So he can actually split push pretty strongly right now. 
Uh, well, granted, he has more value in team fights. He can play that split push game and just say, okay, well, you guys can have the Baron. We're going to take your Nexus. Uh, so really, really, really big possibility here. Um, but of course, probably the best choice here is just take Baron and leave because there's nothing else that blue team can do here. They're just stuck in their base, and if they don't defend, they're going to lose. Yeah, they don't really have many options here. It's not looking great for Miguel, but St. Clair is looking for this Baron. Probably going to be the final Baron at the start of the fight here. And <laughs> Miguel can find a steal to stop this from happening. This is looking to be the final nail in the coffin here. Sinclair just has to take down one more inhibitor, one more tower, and that's probably going to be it here. Yeah, they should be able to march it down top and going to take that tier two. They don't even care about the gold that it gives anymore at this point. They just want to finish off this game as soon as possible. They are so far ahead. 12k gold is a massive lead. The Rock Boom's gonna be one-shotting these turrets with Tristana, probably the best ADC to take turrets with. Gonna have to leave away taking half of his HP from the Callista. Some nice damage there, so maybe St. Clair gonna have to let Rock Boom heal up a little bit, even though it doesn't have too many healing items. Corky in this mid lane is also level 15. It's gonna be doing so much damage, but a good pop blossom from this Nico could spell danger for St. Clair. They're looking to chop away this tier 3. Let's look if Blitz can find any hook. Finds it onto the Lee Sin. Maddie has to be very careful. Gets absolutely one shot. The Dragon Soul is going to come out. Pop Blossom onto 2. It's able to find it. Rock Boom still full HP in the back line. Does get hit by the Little Sleep. It's a great team fight from McGill. Rock Boom going to get flashed on there. Bakery Boy going to get hooked in as well. And there's a 3 for O for McGill University. You could see their team comp really showing their scaling aspects that they should be able to chase down Alonzo here and pick him up. Rock Boom he still has to be careful on the Tristana can't get too gritty here. Should be able to get a lot out alive, but McGill University with a great team fight and take it a 3 for 0. Yeah, they still have one with Baron buff, but that's going to be a massive clear for McGill. Taking out four of the members. It's not looking great for St. Clair, but they're still in the lead. They're going to lose a couple powers from that fight. It's like Rockboom's going to go back up, try and defend mid lane right now. And they're going to gear up for Dragon because they want this really bad. That's going to be Soul going over to St. Clair College if they manage to get this Dragon. Yeah, most definitely here we're looking at a comeback angle for the side of McGill University. Um, that team fight was huge and shows the power of a Blitzcrank when he's playing from behind. Uh, Blitzcrank, of course, being a champion that can completely turn a team fight upside down just by landing a one hook. Um, so... We're going to be seeing a possible comeback angle on the side of McGill University, um, but there is also the condition that Tristana is still fed out of her mind, and Gragas is still pretty darn strong. Um, so those team fights are going to be a big threat. I think here probably St. Clair messing up their team fight uh, did cause a very, very big problem, because again, McGill University has a lot of CC with the Lolia Slave, the Jack Stun, the Pop Blossom on the side of Nico along with her roots, plus the Blitzcrank hook and Airborne. Here though, Drag does end up going. Keep it behind by the Nico though. Ooh. Could be a oh. massive flank here. Everyone's going in. Rock Boom's gonna be able to find one. We'll get a reset. That's a huge sleep though. We're gonna see the Nico flash in here. Surely misses Rock Boom, misses everybody. The great dodges there from St. Clair. Now this should be the cleanup crew. Corky able to find his second kill of the team fight. Bakery Boy maybe looking for a pentacle of his own, but it's gonna be Rock Boom, Ricky, and Alonzo here able to pick up the Jacks, able to pick up the Callista, and that's going to be a 5 for 0 ace, triple kill for Bakery Boy, and that should beat the game. They're going to be able to close it out here in a very dominant fashion. Other than a few misplayed team fights, St. Clair College will take the 2 0 over McGill University. Yeah, uh, St. Clair fumbling a team fight, but they made up for that one in the last one uh, by completely wiping out McGill University and getting to their nexus. Uh, so that will spell the doom of McGill University here. Uh, okay, at least in dive. <laughs> yeah, at least in diving into the fountain to get those extra kills. Uh, you know, pump up those stats a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that will be a 2-0 victory on the side of St. Clair College. Uh, very, very well executed games. Slight hiccup at the team fight, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Without a doubt, and that's going to be the 2-0 going over to our Saints. A great start to the season, and they're definitely going to be looking to keep that ball rolling. They're going to have to improve on maybe a few things here and there, but overall, 
well played by all the players and oh, definitely. a great performance for them to start yeah. off the season. Yeah, McGill really has the early game on lock, though, it seems. Every single time they manage to get the early advantage, but St. Clair just threw a little bit better CSing and a little bit better, uh, I think, team play uh, when yeah, they're in the disadvantage play, state. Seeing... Is just is just where they managed to get the advantage there, yeah. and but they did manage to get the gr more grubs I think each time on the side of McGill. They did, they did. But. They definitely focused their grubs a lot more on that second game, and thanks to that they stalled a little bit longer I think. Um, but I mean after that you just end up with the situation that St. Clair has really strong team fights, and yeah with the Gregus with the the um, the least sin it is really really hard to get those team fights to go your way so that's kind of just how it goes yeah it just went the way of st Clair every single time but mcgill definitely has a lot of potential there they just have to practice a little bit more of the micro i believe and a little bit more uh of like how to play in a disadvantaged state because when they were in the advantaged state they played amazingly but st Clair just knew how to deal with that but you know I'm curious as to what Ricky LaFleur has to say about this. We're going to be right back with an interview with him. Gabriel's going to do that one. So we're going to throw it to a quick break. and We'll be right back with that. Bakery Boy 
and Rockboom. Um, kind of going to give us a little bit of an interview. Uh, uh, Rock Boom, Public Enemy number one. My God, I am so bad with names. I'm sorry. Uh, also known as Ricky. Um, so we're kind of going to talk over uh, a little bit of an a the aspects of the game. So number one, first question. That top lane performance on the Olaf, that was positively disgusting. Can you tell us more about it? Well, thank you for pointing that out. Um, I think that that was a culmination of my jungler having good communication with me, setting up the early plays, and then also enemy team's pick was bad. I don't think they should ever be locking Rumble into Olaf. It's just not a good matchup in the first place. But yeah, I want to attribute most of that lead to the early game that Maddie provided for top lane. He did a lot of uh, facilitating for that. And uh, kind of on the topic of the top lane, you think the Void Grubs are kind of helping out with the ganks? To be honest, the Void Grubs, I don't really know. Like I. I think the Void Grubs just make the game so much more interesting in the top lane because it inspires more action out of top lane. Whereas, as last season was, you really wouldn't see anything but Herald. And other than that, top lane was an island. You'd have maybe 5kp by the time team fights happened, and that was it. But nowadays, Grubs make top lane a much more active place. So they, as much as they don't help on Grubs or on tower dives, I think they are such a good aspect for this season because it provides so much more, like, Gameplay for top side. All right, really interesting. So on the side of the mid lane, uh, really, really good performances on both your Irelia. Uh, by the way, your Irelia was really, really clean. I personally, I played Irelia like one, two, three times total, mm -hmm. and uh, after the third time, I gave up because I can't follow the champion. Like my eyes cannot follow Irelia. It's like Yone when you're playing up against Yone. I can't follow those champions for some reason. Uh, I think they're just too fast for my brain to process. Uh, can you kind of tell us a little bit more about uh, the team compositions that you guys were going for uh, going into these drafts? Yeah, so our plan was the first pick Brand, which we got. So normally you kind of want to keep Brand as the only AP champion in your composition. So I play a lot of different AD mids, but some of them were banned, like Akshan. I also played Jace, which they picked. So Aureli was just down the list of the next kind of option for that. Okay, I see, I see. And um, so another thing that I kind of wanted to ask you guys. So when it comes to your like strategy, when you guys play games, right? Like granted, they differ based on your compositions and who you're going up against. But can, do you guys have like a doctrine that you guys are going to adopt uh, moving forward with this new season with the new changes? Yeah, we're still trying to figure things out. We haven't got a ton of time to practice yet. So this was kind of a good introduction to the season. It wasn't, you know, our play was a bit sloppy but you know that's what happens when we're just like getting back into yeah, it yeah. but I think we'll have a definite more defined style once I guess the meta is solved as well as we get more comfortable with each other all right I see and a uh, personal me question the uh the the corky corgi was that like <laughs> that was that was beautiful but was that a purchase skin or a hex section uh I think it was a Hextech skin, oh. but normally we go with the ice toboggan. I just wanted to shake some backside, you know? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it, it's the whole point of the skin. Uh, so that was a really, really fun uh, interview, guys. Thank you very much for letting us talk to you guys and uh, giving us a little bit of insight on you guys. We're going to send it right back to the back rooms uh, to kind of talk to you guys uh, about the game. Thank you very much. Welcome to the backrooms, everybody. It was a great interview. Thank you very much, Gabe. I love the quirky questions, asking the real hard-hitting questions, getting to the root of the cause. But what a game, Theo, we had here today. Very good game. Very dominant start to the season for our Saints. And as you heard Bakery Boy say, they're going to look to find an identity as soon uh, as they get to play a little bit more, get to connect with the new meta, new season, new everything. So uh, basically like a bit of a fresh start, but with a lot of chemistry for them. So I think they're on the upside for the season. Exactly. Starting off with a win. There's no better way to start it. But thank you very much, everybody, for watching. And thank you to our sponsors, Tim Hortons, HyperX Subway, the St. Clair SRC, and the St. Clair Alumni Associ Association. Thank you, everybody in the back. I believe it's Amanda, Jace. Um, I'm blanking on the uh, other person there. Anyways. <laughs>
<laughs> back rooms can help me there. <laughs> but uh, Ari, yes, yeah, so sorry. <laughs> Anyways, it's been an amazing time, and we'll see. Oh, don't forget Sponsors, to follow the socials. socials you, yeah. go, you always get me on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't forget to follow the social, guys. And we'll be back here tomorrow in the 8.30, 8.30 p.m. We will have Overwatch first game Nace. this season, Nace. Uh, a new look at a bit of a newer roster so it's going to be a very very interesting one at that and uh, yeah we'll see you guys tomorrow thank you for watching thank you very much